Welcome back to Master Your Glass with me, Livia Laro. What happens when life gives you lemons? Well, there was this lady by the name of Antonia Maria Farage who got plenty of them in her orchard. And she, of course, decided to make limoncello. And thanks to her and thanks to these producers, we're gonna taste six of them today. We're gonna go through the differences between each and every one of them. And we're gonna help you pick the one that you might like the best. Andiamo. Okay, so what exactly is limoncello? Well, limoncello is a yellow, green, neon colored liqueur made in Italy, and of course now also made in a few other countries. Go figure. Uh, limoncello is typically served ice cold as a digestivo, and um, the uh, basic ingredients in it are alcohol, sugar, uh, the peel of the lemon, which gives it this great color, and of course, water. Uh, by the way, a little trivia, which celebrity do you know that actually used to have a limoncello brand? Uh, please add the comments below and uh, I will also let you know at the end of this episode. Now, let's move on. Okay, so the production of limoncello can actually be really uh, regionalized. Uh, it is typically the area of Sorrento and the island of Capri and anywhere in the Gulf of Naples where the limoncello is considered uh, to be made at its best. Now that may or may not be the case for every limoncello and of course, great lemon liqueurs are made all over the country of Italy, uh, but let's just say that the Sorrentine Peninsula is what makes the IGP, which is a protected geographic area with these ginormous lemons that look just like this one that have a really thick skin and now while the lemons are not grown organically or are not certified organic they are grown organic because the only part that you are using is actually the peel of the lemon so you don't want any pesticides in it uh, once the lemons are harvested within 24 hours they are typically macerated into the alcohol uh, where of course the alcohol extracts the flavors of those lemons and then on the flip side of that they're also infusing sugar and water and making sort of a simple syrup until finally the two infusions the sugar and the water and the lemon and the alcohol are meshed together filtered and bottled into these beautiful products so what does limoncello actually taste like? Well, while the ingredients in the bottle are actually just four, the flavors can really vary. And in a bottle of limoncello, you will typically encounter the following flavors. The first one is, well, the peel of the lemon and it's nice citrus and notes that it will give it. The next thing you will get are some spices. Now those spices can either come from the actual alcohol base or they actually come from the extraction of the lemon peel and sometimes they're just a combination of both. Next, and you have an abundance of this, is sugar. Uh, limoncello is intended to be a very sweet liqueur. Now, um, rather than considering it sugar and sweetness, consider it more like a cotton candy, fluffy, velvety sweetness. That's what you get in a bottle of limoncello. And last but not least, sometimes you'll get a little bit of floral notes. Now the floral notes may or may not be there and they don't affect the, uh, the limoncello that much, but sometimes just the magic that comes from the combination of those four ingredients will give you a little bit of florality. Okay, why don't we go ahead and taste these? Now I have positioned these in a specific order. I feel like we are going from more citrus to more sweet and fluffy and velvety. And of course, in between the more balanced type, but I am tasting them again now and you never know what will come out. Now, by the way, if you like what you're seeing, please do give us a like and hit that subscribe button. And why don't you smash that bell too? That way you can be notified every time I have more content just like this. Now, the first limoncello I'm gonna taste is the Pellini Limoncello, family owned company by the name of Pellini, of course. This limoncello was launched in the 90s. It is 26% alcohol by volume. In my hometown, in my city of Las Vegas, this bottle here retails for about $31.99. Uh, now, Pellini is made in Rome, but it is made with the lemons from Sorrento. They have plenty of time. Remember, there's a 24 hour window, so they harvest them in Sorrento. They take them to Rome and they produce this product, again, bottled at 26%. Uh, the aroma 
is definitely very citrus forward, lemon forward. Now I have these very chilled, so they're not gonna give me the, uh, the all of their aroma, but I am going to taste them the way they're meant to be tasted, which is very cold. Very citrus driven limoncello. I definitely get the lemon peel on the nose. So velvety and so nice and fluffy. Um, the flavor of this limoncello Polini is definitely more on the lemon side. It's the lemon peel, it's the lemon oil. Of course, there is some of that velvety sweet um, sugar. Uh, however, it takes a back end. There's definitely more lemon. There's a tad of spice. Now again, spice comes from alcohol and this limoncello is a little bit lower in alcohol. So there's a tad of spice and maybe a little bit of floral, but this is a lemon forward limoncello, which I would use honestly in sour style cocktails. Those that are meant to be fresh and vibrating and um, very good before a meal. Okay, so next I'm going to taste the Caravella Limoncello. This also is made with the lemons from the Amalfi Coast. In my hometown, this one here costs about $19.99. It's a kick above on the alcohol uh, in comparison to the Polini. This one here is 28. It has this lime, lemon, green, or lime, green, yellow uh, kind of color to it. And let's see what it tastes like. Oh, the aroma is a little less fluffy and a little more bold. I almost want to say that it's a little less playful than the Polini, uh, but I'm getting, but probably a little bit more balanced. That al extra alcohol is really kind of folding things together. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So this Limoncello here is actually really different to, to the Polini. It still has that velvety fluffiness. It still has that citrus lemon, but because I'm gonna guess, it's just because of the extra alcohol, it's all very well rounded. It's a very well balanced cocktail. Well, everybody gets to play together in the same effect. Very little on the floral, very little on the spice, but just a really nice balance of alcohol, sugar, and lemon. Okay, so next I am going to taste the Villa Massa Limoncello. This also has its roots in Sorrento. As a matter of fact, it is said that this family produced and sold the lemons of Sorrento far before it actually made a limoncello. Uh, now this one here uh, retails at about $29.99. It is 30% alcohol by volume, so we have a kick more alcohol in this one. Now the color of this one is definitely more on the olive green side and a little more, I don't know, I wanna say less neon, more serious. Oh, the aroma. The aroma almost gives off very little of the lemon peel. It's not a highly aromatic limoncello. But again, it's giving me a little sense of less playfulness and a little more serious notes. Okay. So this limoncello here is a lot more sweet. It's giving me a lot more sugar, a lot more of that simple syrup, a combination of water and sugar in the, uh, in my, on my palate, a little bit less of that citrus lemon. So the citrus lemon that was over here has kind of gone away over here. And this one here is handing off more of those citrus notes uh, to that fluffy, velvety, sweet note. Um, the, uh, I'm getting a touch of spice, just a little bit of touch of spice at towards the end from the alcohol, but I'm also getting a really nice rich florality, some nice little floral notes that are going on with that sweetness and with that little citrus note. Okay, next up, I'm gonna try the Luxardo Limoncello. Now Luxardo is a historical, uh, legendary producer, and uh, they are more famous, of course, for their maraschino cherries or their maraschino liqueur, uh, but make no mistake about it, they are producer of many other wonderful products, and I am about ready to try their limoncello. Look how clear this is. This is definitely a far more clarified version of limoncello. That olive green and that lime green is kind of meshing in 
to the lemon. Uh, this one here comes at 27% alcohol by volume. Oh yeah, and this is far more on the aroma, even more drier than the other expressions than these two. And so again, it's getting more firm on the aroma as I'm going this way, at least so far it has. Oh wow, amazing florality on this one, more so than any on the other any of the other ones. I'm getting a really nice balance of the lemon, but more than lemon, I'm just getting nice floral notes. Uh, uh, the right amount of sweetness, it's a really sweet liqueur, but it's right where it needs to be. I am getting zero alcohol, right? So if the alcohol bite is not your thing, uh, here is the one that I would highly recommend for you. And uh, just a really nice, well-balanced, drier version of a limoncello is Luxardo. Okay, so next I'm gonna try Toski. Actually, it's funny, I'm going from one company very famous for its cherries, amongst many other things, to another company very famous for its cherries because Toski Vignola started as a company that would preserve the Vignola cherries. And then of course it evolved into a company that makes really cool liqueurs. Now, the Limoncello Toski is actually the opposite of the Luxardo that I was holding on earlier as far as the glass goes. That one was all very clear. This one here is very opaque, right? It's completely yellow in color. I don't get any really lime green uh, inside of, uh, uh, on, in this glass. Let me go ahead and give this a smell. The aroma is a little more creamy, a little less lemon. I almost feel like there's a lemon cream puff in here with the creamy part uh, being more abundant. Mm. And the palate confirms exactly what I was smelling. I am getting far more of a creamier style of limoncello, way uh, much more about the velvety fluffiness and a lot less about the lemon, but the lemon is there and it's balanced. It's just a very different fluff, a very different velvet. Again, think about a cream puff with lemon in it. That's exactly what I'm tasting here. By the way, Toski uses lemons from Sicily versus the lemons from uh, Sorrento, which we saw over here in these ones. So I was happy to taste this just to get a little different perspective on what the lemons outside of uh, Sorrento will give you. This is a fluffy, velvety style of limoncello. And as I was saying over here, these I would use more for the um, sour style cocktails, aperitif, very dry, very refreshing. Over here, I'm starting to get into something more like a Sgropino over vanilla ice cream, something a little more desserty, more creamy, more fluffy. Um, really nice limoncello and I'm having a good time here. If you are, please do comment below and let me know how I'm doing. And that moves us on to the last limoncello I'm gonna taste is actually a limoncello cream. It is made from Joya Luisa. Now most limoncello producers that make a cream also make the normal version. Uh, Joya Luisa is exactly from Sorrento. And what on earth is a crema de limoncello? Well, it in essence is the house's limoncello, whatever one style they would make, with the addition of a cream, and that gives it even more cream fluffiness. Definitely something that's gonna be a little bit more desserty. And as you can see here, it almost has this lime milk colored uh, color to it. And let's go ahead and see what this is all about. Really hard to detect much on the aroma. Now these are also lower in alcohol by volume. So this one here, I believe is 17, it is. And um, with the lower alcohol, and of course with more cream to it, all the volatile aromas kind of disappear, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna be tasty. Mm. Oh, very fluffy, very velvety. Um, the best way I can explain this is take a really nice pungent citrus forward lemon and dunk it into a nice uh, uh, whipped cream, sugar, 
cotton candy combination and out you get this really nice dessert in a glass creamy uh, limoncello which I really enjoy as a matter of fact I'm gonna have another sip mm. Mm. so so good now on to how I would use these in cocktails I kind of alluded to it already as I was tasting them but keep in mind this right lemon goes in everything citrus is always a really good component in cocktails and many many cocktails call for lemon and then they call for lemon sour or they call for lemon and simple syrup so the combination of lemon sugar and water is a home run in most of those cocktails uh, typically lemon does better in brown spirits it's a rule of thumb it's not a, a, a law but typically lemon will do better in brown spirits such as cognac such as whiskeys uh, whereas lime does a little better inside the clear goods. So if you want to make a cocktail with these, think of those cocktails that are influenced by lemon with brown spirits, such as the whiskey sour. Or again, as you get more over here, uh, I would actually start thinking more of gropinos or things that are served as dessert drinks. Think of maybe a variation to a Brandy Alexander, uh, making it with lemon versus the cocoa uh, components to it, uh, or maybe a variation, of course, to a grasshopper, where you're giving it more of the lemon rather than the, the mint flavors. And that concludes this tasting. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a really good time tasting these liqueurs. And if you did like it, please do give us a like, a subscribe, and come back to Master Your Glass with me, Livio Laro, where you get expert instruction for everyday engagement. All right, well, I forgot actually to give you the celebrity that has actually endorsed and embraced and created a limoncello product, and that is, drum roll please, Danny DeVito. So Danny DeVito uh, created a product in the early 2000s, which was made with the limoncello, with the lemons from Sorrento. It was, of course, called Danny DeVito Limoncello, and I haven't seen it in a while, but hey, what do I know? Mm -hmm.